Hi, it's Dr. Taz here, and I wanted to share a few strategies and insights from my book, The Bounce Back. The Bounce Back is my book where I talk about what happened to me in December of 2022. I had my life planned out for 2023, and then all of a sudden, it was like I hit a brick wall. And I realized that something was wrong with me and was quite a lot of things wrong with me from physical health to emotional. And just I was all out of balance. And, you know, it's not good when we're out of balance. So I want to talk to you a little bit and give you a few strategies uh, that may help you if you're experiencing this. As I was preparing for tonight, I thought about it's the beginning of the school year. And I've been talking to some folks about the beginning of the school year. So that may be something that you can relate to if you haven't had some of the challenges that I had a couple months back. But it's the beginning of the school year. So that means you've got to get your kids a uh, haircut if it's a young man. you got to get the young girl's hair done. Uh, hi, Shantessa. Thanks for joining me. Uh, you got to get the school clothes and some of our kids, you know, they have uniforms, you know, and then you got to arrange, you know, after school care. It's just so many things. And then some of you have to take supplies to school, school supplies. So it's just so many things that are happening. And it's like, I don't know which way to go. And sometimes as we're trying to make sure we meet everyone else's needs, our needs kind of take a back seat. And that's basically what happened to me in December. I was trying to make sure everybody else was taken care of, and I just didn't realize that I wasn't taking care of myself. So I think the first thing that we have to look at is you've got to recognize when you're overwhelmed, because sometimes we're overwhelmed and we just keep pushing through, pushing through, pushing through, and we do that, but at some point, you're going to hit that wall. You don't want to hit the wall like I did, because you can't push through 100% all the time. And there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that you need to disconnect. Now, I had already completely disconnected, meaning that I wasn't even aware of what was happening to me. But if you can realize before you get to that point that it's okay, just disconnect. And by disconnect, I mean in the appropriate way, taking a breather, taking a moment for yourself. But unfortunately for me, I had totally disconnected. I had not a clue about what was happening to me or what was happening around me. So the one takeaway that's an actionable one here I want you to get is, you know, first acknowledge that life can be very demanding. As I said, it's back to school time. So this is a really uh, demanding time for parents as they get everything ready for their kids to go back to school. But also understand and then accepting the situation as it is, because hopefully this is going to be a short time crunch as we try to get everything ready for our kids to go back to school. So just breathe, acknowledge it. There are going to be some things that you're not going to be able to get done. That's OK. Right now, the most important thing is get our kids ready for school. So acknowledging when you're overwhelmed and then determining what the best next step should be. Well, also, for me, as related to my concern, you know, I realized that I had not been embracing self-care and mindfulness. You know, I found myself that particular week, I had medical appointments, I had a dental appointment to get a, a crown replaced, uh, and I went to have a mammogram done, and then they're like, well, let's do it another film. I'm like, okay. Then they're like, well, we see a little something. You know, we've got space. We can do a biopsy today. And I'm like, okay, we can do the biopsy today. Now, imagine getting that news when you just went for a mammogram. But I, I sucked it up. You know, I'm superwoman. You know, we shouldn't be superwomen. Hi, Luana. You know, because we're not superwomen. And so I took it like a champ and was lying in the uh, on the bed and never had a, a biopsy done before. And, you know, going through the motions, listening to them talk around me and trying to center myself so that I didn't lose it because that was not part of my plan for that day or that week to have an unexpected biopsy. You know, I write that I was fully present. I was fully present at that moment when they were doing the biopsy because I was praying, you know, asking God to be with me. But after the biopsy was done, well, I had to run back to the dentist because they were having to do something. I had to pick it up. And it's like I never had a moment to process what was happening because I went for a mammogram, had a mammogram, and then I had a biopsy. 
So it's a matter of, was I embracing self-care? Was I practicing mindfulness? Not at all. I was just going through the motions like a robot. I wasn't in touch with anything that was happening to me. So what I want you to do as far as your takeaway with that is mindfulness. We need to practice it every day if we can. Hopefully we are because, you know, it helps to keep us centered. And there are simple things that we can do to make it part of our routine. It may be just meditation. And meditation doesn't have to be all zen zen. Meditation could just be quiet. Can I have 60 seconds of quietness? Maybe three minutes of quietness. Well, you just center yourself. You just calm down, breathing, breathing in and out slowly to calm your system down. It will bring your pulse down, but also it will calm you down. It will help you to get into a space where you are more in tune with yourself. So practicing mindfulness every day, even if you only get 60 seconds, or if you can get three minutes, that's even better. Start small. Rome was not built in a day. Also, prioritizing self-care. You know, you know. sometimes we think self-care means I got to get my hair done, I got to get my nails done, I got to have a massage. But self-care could be anything that helps you to relax. It could be grabbing a book. It could be reading that book or grabbing your iPad. If you're a person who likes to cook, you know, cook something. If you like to garden, do that. Just going for a walk. Maybe listening to music, because I love music. Whatever it is that helps you to uh, re rejuvenate yourself, you know, to, to recharge your batteries, that's okay. It's about what works for you. But the thing is, make self-care a priority. Oftentimes, our self-care is always the last thing on the list. And we can't be the last thing on the list, okay? Not if we're going to keep everything else going. Also... I'm, well, I'm not ashamed to say, when I was experiencing pain back in December, I think it's December the 9th, they I'll never forget, I stood up from my desk. I wasn't supposed to be working that day, but I worked anyway. Was I practicing self-care? Not at all. I stood up and I was doubled over in pain. I knew I was in pain because I felt it, but there was a disconnect between my mind and my body, and I'm going to even say my heart, because I would like to think my heart would have overruled my mind and said, you need to get some help. But someone had to prompt me after they saw me walking, uh, bent over, and they're like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I'm in pain. And they're like, you're in pain? I'm like, yeah, I'm in pain, but I'm still thinking I'm superwoman. And you know, we're no superwomen. And I'm just moving around, tried to lie down, that didn't work, tried to sit up, that didn't work, I'm sliding down the sofa because I, I'm in pain. And ultimately, I went to the hospital and was admitted and was on a morphine drop, probably drip, rather morphine drip, probably within 90 minutes of going to the hospital. So it was a quick turnaround. Uh, you know how ERs are, they're normally not that quick, but thank God he helped me, he stepped in. But the most important thing is I didn't listen to my body. You know, our bodies speak to us all the time. You know, it whispers. Be a little nag here, a little twitch there. You limp, you know, your finger or whatever. It's not feeling quite right, but we don't pay attention. And so we have to pay attention to our bodies. You know, I think I write in the book that, you know, you get a headache. And it's related to your blood pressure, but you keep ignoring the headache. And eventually, your body doesn't even react to the fact that your blood pressure is up or it's reacting, but you don't get the same signal that your blood pressure is high because you're not getting that headache or whatever it is for you. So again, it's a whisper sometimes, but we have to be listening to what our body is telling us. Hi, Tamika. Thanks for watching. Hi, Tam uh, Tamika. English, you guys know I'm trying to see. Um, so we got to make sure that we are paying attention to what our body is saying. So that's the next takeaway. Listen to what your body is saying. Pay close attention. Pay close attention. And even if you think it's nothing, go check it out. Go check it out. You'll be surprised. And we're not going to talk about that tonight. But the number of people who have so many things wrong 
and you wouldn't think it would be them because of their age, because they may be fit. We never know. I've said to someone, and I'll say it publicly, I am at my healthiest when I'm really sick. So what I mean by that is, if you look at me, I look great, but I'm not great on the inside. So it's a contradiction. She looks like everything is well, but it's not well on the inside. Hey, family. So again, we don't know, but it's always best to be safe when you hear that little whisper, because that's the body talking to us. Um, also, what I want us to begin to think about is being more adaptable and seeking support because you know, in my inability to grasp what was happening to me, you know, I got to the hospital a little late. And like I said, within about 90 minutes, you know, they had me on a morphine drip and it just doesn't, uh, doesn't happen that fast. So, you know, we want to respond quickly, want to adapt and move fast when our body is speaking to us. Okay. Um, also, you know, sometimes you you know, my friend Diane, who I write about in the book, she was my person that I would call and say, blah, 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 blah. And she'd say, you're, you're stuck on stupid, Teresa, or whatever she would tell me. And so, and I, I appreciate that. Um, so you got to reach out, create a, a group of people who can support you. Reach out to them if you can't, like me, can't know, you don't know that you need to get help. Reach out to them and say, you know, this is happening. What do you think? Do you think this is something I need to check in on or what? You know, hi, Vanessa, thanks for joining me. You know, check with that person, friend, family, somebody that can be a sounding board because unfortunately, sometimes we're not in a rational state of mind when we're in pain or something is happening to us, particularly if we've disconnected from everything like I had. So for that takeaway, um, make sure that you, you create your village so that you can reach out to them for support during those times. Because life is going to happen. And the more we can adapt and remember that we do have a village to support us, the easier it will become for us as we navigate change. I guess the last thing I want to leave you with tonight is that, you know, I realized I lost balance. I lost balance. I thought I was in balance. I was not. Um, there was no harmony in my life. I think back to Thanksgiving when the family and friends came over and they said to me afterwards, you was just, one point I think they said I was a little snappy. I can be snappy now. I'm first to tell you, they said I was a little snappy. And I said, really? And what I recounted to them was not what occurred. I was a little snappy. But I had no, I didn't even realize it. I, I didn't realize it. I was so checked out. And that's Thanksgiving. I don't even know, was it two weeks later? I'm in the hospital. I was so checked out. I just, I didn't even realize it. Um, so you've got to maintain that balance. And you need people around you to help you to understand when you're not in balance. They tried to tell me I wasn't in balance, but I thought I was in balance. But then a couple of weeks later, I'm in the hospital, I won't imbalance. And the other reason why it's so important to remain in balance, you can inadvertently hurt other people when you're not in balance. And that was never my intent. I thought everything was good. I thought Thanksgiving was great. And it was, but I was out of balance. So I was a little something, you know, but I didn't realize it. So you may be experiencing some of this. You may have seen it. It may be fleeting. Sometimes it happens so quickly, we don't even catch it. But we've got to rediscover that balance. Balance is important for everything that we do, whether it's personal, uh, professional lives, or civic lives. We have to maintain balance because without balance, we'll get a little mischievous, as a lady mentioned many moons ago at a banquet. She said that uh, sometimes she gets a little mischievous. And I was a young girl, but I never forgot that. She said she got a little mischievous and we don't want to be mischievous, okay? So the takeaway for that is check your inner compass. You know, nobody can check it like you. You will know when you're off balance. You'll know when things are not aligning the way that you need them to. Only you will know that. You know what your goals are. You know what your intentions are. And when you check your compass and you realize that you're out of balance, it's no, it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Just recalibrate, just recalibrate. 
and realign yourself so that you're in alignment with your goals. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. We do it all the time on our jobs. We don't think about it. It's so automatic. But let's do it for us because we're the most important thing. And if we can't take care of us, we cannot be effective in our personal life nor on our jobs. Okay, so that may mean that you are going to create a schedule for your personal life, your civic life, uh, profession. Um, remember that relationships have to be cultivated. But you can't cultivate a relationship if you are an empty pitcher because you can't pour into anyone else if there's nothing there. So make sure that you keep your pitcher full for you first before you start trying to pour into anyone else. Those are the takeaways for today. I hope that you got something out of it. Also, remember that life is going to happen to all of us. The key is how we respond and we can transform our mindset and circumstances by recognizing when we are overwhelmed, embracing self-care, embracing self-care, listening to our bodies. We got to listen to our bodies because our bodies are talking really slow, softly. So we got to listen to our bodies and also seeking support that tribe, our family, our friends, acquaintances that tribe, seek support from them and also rediscovering ourselves. You know, I've had to rediscover who I was because who I was at Thanksgiving, even though I thought it was Taz, it was somebody else. And I soon found out it was not Taz when I ended up in the hospital. You don't want to get to that place. You don't want to get to that place. So make sure that you continually rediscover who you are and make sure that who you are at that moment balances with everything else that you have going on in life. That is very important in order for you to remain in balance. Also, remember that you can stay resilient. Remember that you have the power to shape your mindset and your life. But most importantly, remember that you can't take care of anyone else until you learn to take care of yourself first. And as a minister said to me many moons ago, I'm trying to calculate the years, but it's probably been about 20 years. Time goes so fast that there was no grace for ministers. Give yourself grace. Give yourself grace because if we don't give ourselves grace, we cannot extend it to anyone else. So this has been um, Dr. Taz live talking about how we can transition from one state of being into another, a healthier place. So if you've gotten something out of it, please leave me some comments, just likes, and please share it. And until next time, remember to take care of you before you take care of someone else. Bye now.